Hello, my name is Loretta Papian. I'm the museum assistant here at the Museum of the Plains Indian in Browning, Montana. I'm a member of the Blackfeet tribe and I would like to take you on a tour of our lobby and historic gallery. <coughs> okay. The mural series here in the Museum of the Plains Indian was commissioned by Victor Pepian in 1941. They were painted in the dry sequel technique. The mural series is one of the most important works of descriptive art by a contemporary Plains Indian artist. Pepian was among a group of contemporary Indian artists from various Indian reservations in the United States who, mastering technique of mural paintings during the 1930s and 40s, received major commissions for architectural decoration in public buildings throughout the United States. Okay, how do I pronounce that? Did I uh, pronounce architectural? I can't The murals here in the lobby of the Museum of the Plains Indian were commissioned in 19... 41 to Victor Pepin, Blackfeet Indian artist. Pepin was among a group of contemporary Indian artists from various Indian reservations in the United States who, mastering techniques of mural paintings during the 1930s and 40s, received major commissions for architectural decoration in public buildings throughout the United States. In the museum mural series, Pepian has illustrated four major phases of a tribal buffalo hunt by the Blackfeet of the early 19th century. The first scene of the murals are the hunters sighting buffalo. The mounted hunters sighting a herd of buffaloes prepare for the chase. The second scene, the chase. Using bowls and arrows as weapons, mounted hunters bring down several choice buffalo. The third scene, return to camp. After cutting up the kill, preparations are made for return to camp. The fourth scene. Against a background of painted Blackfeet teepees, several basic uses of the buffalo are illustrated. To the left and center, the buffalo is cooked and feasted upon. To the right, a hide is taken out for dressing into rawhide or soft skin. The buffalo robe displayed here was also done by Victor Pepian. Both works were specially commissioned by the museum in 1941 to illustrate the continuing tradition of narrative painting as developed during the past two centuries by Plains Indian and to underscore the important visual means which Plains Indian have embraced for recording their cultural history. Figurative painting as practiced by Plains Indian men during the 18th and early 19th century was often employed in decoration of hide or skin garment such as buffalo robes as well as a variety of useful and rigid religious objects. The buffalo robe displayed here of the simplified style of such early narrative representation of an individual. <laughs> okay. Achievements. I got I got 
The buffalo robe displayed here was also painted by Victor Pepin. Both works were specially commissioned by the museum in 1941 to illustrate the continued tradition of narrative paintings as developed during the past two centuries by Plains Indian and to underscore the important visual means which Plains Indian have embraced for recording their cultural history. Figurative painting, as practiced by Plains Indian men during the 18th and early 19th century, was often employed in decoration of hide or skin garments, such as buffalo robes, as well as a variety of useful and religious objects. The buffalo robe displayed here of the simplified style of such early narrative achievements of an individual accomplishment painted in native red and commercial dry colors. The robe's composition depicts the war export of Mountain Chief, a Blackfeet warrior and great uncle of the artist. Painted buckskin, ornamented with beaded strips and overlay stitch and pennants of human hair. It is a gift of Mrs. K. Taggart Gradone. How's that? What did I say? No. We will start our historic tour here in the lobby of the museum. The suit you are looking at now belonged to Curly Bear who was born in 1845 and died in 1926. The suit cons consists of buckskin ornamented with beaded strips, an overlay stitch, and pennants of human hair. The suit is a gift of Mrs. K. Taggart Gordon. The bowl he is holding is choke cherry wood, tipped with sinew, backed with snake skin, and has a sinew bowstring. This is a gift from the Frank B. Linderman Memorial, gift of his three daughters. Miss Wilda Linderman, Miss Vernie Linderman, and Mrs. Norma Linderman Waller. The woman's dress on display is Blackfeet, mid-19th century. The dress is decorated with glass beadwork called real beads by the Blackfeet. This is the first beads introduced to the Indians by the fur traders. The strip across the front of the cape stimulates early, earlier style of dress, which includes a deer scent gland. The belt she is wearing is commercial leather decorated with brass upholstery tacks. The outfit is a gift of Mrs. K. Taggart Gordon.
Blackfeet Warriors Man Shirt, about 1880, red woolen tray cloth decorated with beadwork and ermine pennant. This is one of our finer Warriors shirt in our collection.
pattern of migration. Start over again. Just keep that going. Migration to the plain Indian stone here by the main drift of tribal migrations. We have different colors here: Shoshone, Kiowa, Algonquin, and Siouxan uh, language family here. With the black feet starting out near the Great Lakes here, 1650, moving west up into Canada to 1725, over to 1800 the present day reservation where we are now. Some of the neighboring tribes was the Plains Cree, 1800, moved down in here. The Assiniboine, the Ojibwe, and Rapaho. Reservations of Plains Indians are here in most of the Plains area. You have the Blackfeet in Montana, up here in the northern part here, yeah, with the neighboring reservations of the Cree, Cinnaboyne, Cinnaboyne Sioux, and the Crow in the northern Cheyenne, all in Montana.
Close focus on you and find out where you're at. So. Well, so you see, I cut this off uh, right here. Yeah, even up about right here. <laughs> but I feel funny because I got bad eyes. Let's see. What's this say? <laughs> yeah, you could even bring it up. Like, yeah, then you can just when you point over there, he'll just pull in over there. Okay. You don't even have to zoom and just turn the camera over there. Ready. Uh, my name is Kim Snyder. I'm the museum curator at the Museum of the Plains Indians, located here in Browning, Montana. And the Museum of the Plains Indians, which is operated by the Indian Arts and Crafts Board, is an agency of the United States Department of the Interior, uh, which serves the Indians, Eskimos, and general public as informational, promotional, and advisory clearinghouse for all matters pertaining to the development of the authentic Indian and Eskimo arts and crafts. Through its very uh, activities, the Indian Arts and Crafts uh, aims to promote the many cultural achievements of modern Indian and Eskimo artists and craftsmen of the United States to create a demand for the production of authentic products and provide uh, the stimulation to broaden markets and production resulting in a direct benefit of supplemental income to the Indian and Eskimo people. And uh, some of the areas which, in, which are included in the Northern Plains are the areas here in Montana and North Dakota, South Dakota, Wyoming, Idaho, Washington, Oregon, and Colorado. These areas are where we draw a lot of our material for our authentic uh, permanent collections and also for our contemporary art exhibitions of the Indian people. Um, 
this agency serves the Indians, Eskimos, and the general public as an informational, uh, promotional, and uh, advisory clearinghouse for the uh, products of Indians and Eskimos. And through its great activities, the Indian Arts and Craft Board uh, aim is to promote the many cultural achievements of the modern Indian and Eskimo artists and craftsmen of the United States. And of the main areas of the Museum of the Plains Indians covers is the uh, Northern Plains, which is Montana, North Dakota, South Dakota, Wyoming, South, uh, South Dakota, Idaho, and Washington. And also included with this, we have our permanent collection, which is devoted to the creating a better understanding of and history, culture, and the past, and the present of the Indian peoples of the region. And along with this, uh, we have our special activities, which involves the contemporary Indian exhibits, which is featured every six weeks. And with this, we feature the Indians, and then their work is sold through the craft shop, which is operated by the Northern Plains Craft Kim Snyder. I'm the museum curator here at the Museum of the Plains Indians and Craft Center, which is located at Browning, Montana, in the center of the Blackfeet Indian Reservation. And the, I guess I could explain some of the functions of the museum. The Museum of the Plains Indians is operated by the Indian Arts and Crafts Board, which is an agency of the U.S. Department of the Interior. And through the museum, its main function is to the promotional and informational and advisory clearinghouse of all uh, arts and crafts of the Indians and Eskimos of the area. And, uh, I'm going to quit.